what's crack guys welcome back to my channel today's video is one that i'm very excited to film i'm actually quite nervous to film this is probably like the fifth time i've tried to film this introduction but that is for book recommendations for one of my favorite television shows of all time sanctuary if you're new to my channel you might not know that sanctuary is mentioned in probably 90 percent of my videos i'm a big fantasy reader and a lot of those books remind me of Sanctuary so I thought that it was about time that I should sit down and collect a lot of these books and have this one place where I can just talk all about Sanctuary. There might be a volume two, there probably will be a volume two, but for now I have five honorary mentions and eight books that I think that if you were a fan of Sanctuary then you might like these books. If you don't know what Sanctuary is, it is a television show starring Amanda Tapping herself as Dr. Helen Magnus. Amanda Tapping might sound familiar because she was in Stargate SG-1. It follows Dr. Helen Magnus who is an enigmatic scientist who along with her protege Dr. Will Zimmerman and her daughter Ashley they form the Sanctuary team who track down, study and protect the strange and often terrifying creatures that secretly populate our world. That means the likes of mermaids, yetis, other people with abnormalities which is what they refer to as powers. The twist is that Helen is 157 years old in season one. She is from the Victorian era but how has she become 157 years old? Well the series answers that and it also leaves a lot of questions to me personally and I think some of these books will help. So without further ado let's just get into it. One of the first things that you learn about sanctuary is that Helen knows a lot of people throughout history. She went to college or audited classes at college with some very renowned names. Montague John Druitt who was one of the suspects in the Jack the Ripper murders, James Watson who was apparently the inspiration for Sherlock Holmes. Sir Arthur Conan Doyle wanted to use him for his lead character but then he decided that he wanted to play the assistant. So Sherlock Holmes is essentially James Watson. Nikola Tesla who we all know or should know because Team Tesla all the way. Nigel Griffin who is the invisible man and with Helen they form the five. And at college, they experimented with what humans could become if given the chance, but they decided to speed up the process by using vampire blood and they injected themselves with a serum which had all kinds of ramifications for the five. Montague John Druitt developed teleportation abilities and also quite the thirst for blood hence the Ripper killings, fictionalized of course. Griffin developed the powers of invisibility. James Watson's intelligence grew to new heights and Nikola Tesla became a vampire as you do. Whereas Helen Magnus gained the gift of longevity which meant that she aged at an extremely decelerated rate. So she's basically wolfering. So to start off I'm going to go into the five honorary mentions and then afterwards I'm going to go into the eight books that I think remind me the most of Sanctuary. The first book that is an honorary mention is the Grisha Universe books by Leigh Bardugo. I'm just holding up Shadow and Bone because I have like so many of them that it would just be impossible to hold up. In the Grisha Universe there are people called Grisha who have all of these amazing fantastical abilities. There are heart renderers, there are squalors, there are tide makers, they are able to control things. Some of them can control air, some of them can control water, some of them can control your blood, your heart, everything. These Grisha are basically the abnormals that Sanctuary houses and helps and protects. The reason why I'm including this and especially why I'm holding up Shadow and Bone is the main character of Alina. She reminded me of Ashley. Ashley is the daughter of Helen Magnus and Montague John Druitt who as I said was one of the suspects in the Jack the Ripper murders but she is the daughter of two source blood abnormals. That is what they called the vampire serum that they injected themselves with which is called a source blood. So it would stand to reason that she would have abilities but she doesn't. Throughout the first season it appears that Ashley does not have any abilities besides being really kick-ass but that is from training. It isn't until season two where her abilities are accessed by the cabal. I prefer the reason in this book and that is why Alina did not manifest her powers when she was tested as a child because she didn't want to be taken away from Mal. Slight spoiler alert for this, that reminded me so much of Ashley. I 
preferred that reason for Ashley because she didn't want to be studied. She didn't want to be one of the case studies that her mother would have. I think that's a much more apt way of describing why Ashley doesn't have any powers because it's never explained in the damn show. Next is A Shadow Bright and Burning by Jessica Cluse or Cluez, whatever way or her surname is pronounced. This has a similar vibe in that the lead character in this has this ability that she has been hiding forever. She's been hiding it from everybody around her because she's just a teacher at the orphanage where she was abandoned. One day she has to manifest these powers to save her best friend and is taken to London to be taught how to use her abilities. It reminded me of Sanctuary and also there's a character with the, with the surname Magnus and I think that he could probably have been like an uncle of Helen Magnus so that's pretty much why it's on this list. A bit of a stretch is The Raven Boys by Maggie Steve Otter. There are ways that this could be an honorary mention because it does involve ley lines and that is something that I think the Sanctuary would investigate when if they're looking for something but it also has characters in here that are similar to Sanctuary pretty much in the name only. Gansey's sister is called Helen and she can fly a helicopter without crashing it. Helen Magnus, she crashes them a lot. She crashes planes a lot in Sanctuary. Ronan's brother is called Declan and get this, his girlfriend is called Ashley. I ship Declan McRae and Ashley Magnus so freaking hard despite the fact that they never ever shared a scene together. Never. And yet I ship them so hard. I'm not even sorry. And apparently there's also a character called Henry. I haven't continued on with the series. I've read the first two books. I haven't read the last two. So I'm looking forward to discovering the character of Henry. I also have The Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken. This follows people with abnormal abilities too. It reminded me more of the Cabal from season two than it did Sanctuary. The Cabal are the bad guys in season two. And the last honorary mention is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea by Jules Verne. If you've watched the episode Requiem, you will know why this is on my list because the Nautilus is the name of Helen's submarine and she knew him. Hence the name of my submarine. So on to the main bulk of this video, I'm going to start off with Dracula by Bram Stoker. This reminded me so much of the five themselves when they were experimenting with the vampire blood which they called the source blood the characters in Dracula reminded me so much of them because it follows Jonathan Harker and his fiance which reminded me of Druid and Magnus even Van Helsing reminded me of Will Zimmerman who I freaking hate I cannot stand Will I really can't so I could not stand Van Helsing so I was like oh that's Will. Mina herself reminded me a lot of Helen because this is set in the Victorian era and Mina is rising kind of above her station and helping Jonathan and helping this group in discovering what is going on and she's like documenting Jonathan's work. She's analyzing his diary entries which is pretty much what Helen Magnus would have done herself and she's been very brave and creative and very enigmatic. She's a very enigmatic character herself which I absolutely loved. I think Mina was probably even my favorite character in this book. The other guys themselves, they went between all of the characters of the five. Some of them reminded me of Tesla, some of them reminded me of Druid, of Watson, of Griffin. It was just like a perfect way to kind of like get a gauge of what they were like in the Victorian era if they were like hunting down a Dracula themselves. Next is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This follows two characters called Eli and Victor and for their final hypothesis for college, they came up with the idea that EOs or extraordinaries were able to gain superhero abilities at the point of near death. So they brought themselves to near death and were revived and came back with these amazing abilities, which pretty much reminds me of Sanctuary and the Five and their experiment with the source blood because they themselves accelerated their own abilities by experimentation. Additionally, the characters of Victor and Eli reminded me a lot of the fellas in the five because Druid and Watson had this kind of rivalry because they both had affections for Helen, but that was besides the point. They, they were kind of betrayed by each other because they were best friends when they were 
at college when they were young. Watson felt betrayed by Druid's extracurricular activities, aka the Whitechapel murders. Also, there are times when Tesla's wit from Sanctuary came into the fore with these two characters in Vicious. They just reminded me so much of their wit and banter and even their anger towards each other. It was just well done and I think that if you loved Sanctuary you'll probably enjoy this a lot as well especially if you're like a Marvel fan as well I think those would those two loves would complement each other nicely and you'll get just as much out of this book as I did. With James Watson being the inspiration for Sherlock Holmes it makes no surprise that a Sherlock Holmes book would be on this list right? So I'm going with The Hound of the Baskervilles by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. I picked this one because of the fact that this one follows John Watson around instead of Sherlock Holmes. He makes an appearance at the start and at the end but the main meat of this story follows John Watson as he goes to the moors and investigates this supposed hind. It was really interesting to see how John Watson can shine away from Sherlock Holmes who seems to be the main intelligence and even though James Watson was the inspiration for Sherlock Holmes I could still imagine him being Watson as well. I could easily see Peter Wingfield who plays James Watson in Sanctuary as John Watson in The Hound of the Baskervilles. I could see him doing everything. So I think that if Watson was one of your favourite characters, he was definitely one of mine, then any story with Sherlock Holmes would definitely be a recommendation. I just went with Hound of the Baskervilles because as I said, it followed Watson more than it followed Holmes. And you could easily see Watson in Holmes and in John Watson, if that makes sense. Next I have Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. This one is a bit more of a stretch because of the fact that it's very different from the storyline that Sanctuary takes. It doesn't even have the same suspects. It doesn't even mention Druid in this. I decided to put this on this list because of the fact that I felt that Audrey Rose was very much like Magnus in that she was trying to hunt down Jack the Ripper and she was going out as Audrey Rose was and investigating herself you know as a Victorian woman in these unseedy parts of London by herself. I think Helen Magnus would have done the exact same thing. Audrey Rose ha is being taught science quite clandestinely behind the backs of her father even though in Sanctuary her father is the person that actually taught Helen Magnus and encouraged Helen Magnus just to take over the reins of the sanctuary as it was whereas Audrey Rose is doing it behind her, her father's back with her uncle. It, it's just one of those books that you know you could take it with a pinch of salt. I really would recommend that you take it with a little bit of a pinch of salt but it's still one that I think deserves to be on this list of recommended reads for a Sanctuary fan. Next is one that I think is no surprise and that is The Invisible Man by H.G. Wells. This it more reminds me of Griffin mostly because he is The Invisible Man. Griffin in the series is a bit of a douchebag. Okay not a bit, he is a douchebag. The Invisible Man is a douchebag. The only difference is that in Sanctuary Griffin can control his invisibility whereas this one cannot. He is invisible permanently and he has to have wrappings around his face and clothes on so that people can actually see him but he is a bit of a dick. Where I think this book fits in with the recommendation besides the fact that the character is called Griffin and Sanctuary just put a name in front of it is that Wells delves into themes of science, horror and pride because he was obsessed with developing this key to invisibility and, and it's kind of backfired in that he's permanently invisible and so he wreaks havoc. In Sanctuary that is also a key factor like was it in the pursuit of scientific knowledge that the five experimented with the vampire blood or was it for pride just to say that you know we've uncorked the secret, we have discovered the secret to abnormalities that we can create abnormalities instead of waiting around for it to happen to us or waiting for a generation to come along where they can discover it. Is it their pride, their ego that they're wanting to be stroked or is it just for scientific knowledge? Do they have the right to do that? Like considering the terror that it unleashed through Druid and his thirst for blood, it all delves into that in this book. The next book I'm going to talk about is one that I can see being Will and also Watson. And that is Stormfront by Jim 
Butcher. And this is the first book in the Dresden Files. I've recently read this and it reminded me a lot of kind of like a grittier sanctuary, like the webisodes of Sanctuary. And the setting was a lot more dark and deep urban fantasy-esque. And the fact is that Harry Dresden is a wizard for hire to investigate these murders that were caused by something supernatural. I've only gone to the second one which is called Full Moon and that followed werewolves. So you also have the investigative link between Dresden and also werewolves which is what Henry is in Sanctuary. Watson Zimmerman police action with the murders of Druitt and Henry on steroids. I don't know if a soldier is on it but this is on this list. Next is a book that really inspired me into reading because I didn't know that a book like this existed until I saw the trailer for the movie. The movie I despise. Casting was perfect, but the movie I despise. But it reminded me a lot about Sanctuary. And that is Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. Miss Peregrine's Home is pretty much a sanctuary for these children with peculiar abilities. You get the idea. So these children exist in a loop that is created by Miss Peregrine who can manipulate time so that they relive the same 24 hours and she can morph into a peregrine. She's an imbreen and they control the loops and protect the children within each loop and they are hunted by hollows that want to eat their souls so they could evolve and become kind of human again but what i loved about miss peregrine's home for peculiar children and why i think it linked to sanctuary is because everywhere is a sanctuary to me i can easily imagine miss peregrine and helen magnus being in touch with each other and helen sending abnormals to Miss Peregrine to house them and to keep them safe. Kind of like in a special case scenario where they can't function in a sanctuary and they can't keep them safe in a sanctuary, they send them to a loop where they would have a teacher like Miss Peregrine who would protect them and there would be other children there for them to interact with so that they can develop their social skills, develop their abilities, have fun, be children basically. So I just kind of think that I would easily see Helen Magnus and Miss Peregrine being allies. This whole series would be perfect for a Sanctuary fan because this is like the first ones that I ever read that reminded me so much of Sanctuary and I don't know why I left it to the penultimate one but it is what it is. And the last book that I have on this list of books that I'm going to recommend for a Sanctuary fan is the one that I think is the most in touch with Helen Magnus and this pulls on the thread that I really wanted Sanctuary to explore but it never did. It hinted at it a couple of times, but it did not go into depth. And this book did. And that is How to Stop Time by Matt Haig. The lead character in this, Tom Hazard, is several centuries old. He was born with this very, very decelerated rate of aging. When he hit puberty, aging stopped. So when he was 30, he still looked 14. When he was 100, he looked like 16. He is from the Elizabethan era. So he is old and he has seen a lot all across the globe. He has seen plagues. He has seen wars. He has seen civil wars. He has seen the Jazz Age. He has seen the Gatsby era. He has seen everything. He has had to move all around the globe so the people do not become suspicious of him. He's held every job on the planet. He has sacrificed relationships so that they don't become victims or that people don't become suspicious of him because they do not understand the fact that he ages so so slowly. Where he has had to move Helen Magnus has not. Helen Magnus throughout Sanctuary has been in the grit of everything. She was in Rheem when the Nazis surrendered. She was on Titanic when it sank. She knew Einstein. She knew Amelia Earhart. She knew all of the presidents in her lifetime. She has not had to hide really anything. Her name is known. This book goes into depth of what Tom Hazard has had to lose and how that has impacted him and how it is, has impacted his life. Helen Magnus loses her daughter in at the start of season two. I am still not happy about it near 10 years later. I am still like very salty about it. I am not gonna lie and I will never get over it. Her death is only talked about very rarely. For somebody that froze her embryo when she was pregnant in the Victorian era and then brought 
the baby to term when she could bear the loneliness no longer, for somebody to then lose her daughter and then not talk about it and not talk about that loneliness that then she then feels after it, I felt like that was such a cop-out and I didn't understand why Damien Kindler went down that route where Ashley was very rarely mentioned afterwards, especially since she was such a part of Magnus's life. And in eulogy at the end of it she says you're my life but you you're my life and then she refuses to talk about her afterwards i i thought that was like bullshit to be perfectly honest and the fact that this book really goes into depth of how hazard thought that he lost his daughter about how he lost his mother and how he lost his wife and all of his other relationships and it very much fulfilled that hole that ashley's death kind of left in Magnus. I, I kind of felt like I was reading this somewhat from Magnus's perspective and I wanted it to be from Magnus's perspective. Additionally, Magnus never seems to get bored with her longevity and when she does, it, it seems to be like brushed under a rug very, very quickly. It seems to be like just a moment and then it's like, we're continuing your programming as scheduled. What? No. Hazard is very bored with his longevity at times and he has to then discover how ways to like renew his desire for life. Magnus doesn't seem to do that. This book just seemed to answer a lot of the questions that Sanctuary had left me with and left me asking and left me wanting. It didn't answer anything about the core of these characters. This book gave me a lot of those answers. There you have it guys, those are all of my recommended reads for Sanctuary. A lot of these books were books that I absolutely adored purely because they had those links and threads with Sanctuary. It really brought the books to life and it also made me appreciate things that I loved about Sanctuary. Let me know in the comments if you were a Sanctuary fan or if any of these books have inspired you to read any of them or if you're inspired to actually rewatch the series because let me tell you, I am, but at the same time I'm like, but I, that means I have to watch Will. But thank you guys so much for watching. This is a video that I've been wanting to film for ages and I hope it did itself justice because I really wanted to film this type of video. I was very nervous filming it and I got very much tongue tied and I couldn't think what any of these books were about. My brain just went blank. It was just a hot mess to film and it's probably gonna be even worse to edit. I am sorry. So I'm just gonna wrap it up here. So thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. All of my social media links are down below, so come chat with me, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!